That's a mystery to me, guys. Maybe someday I'll figure it out. Let me know what you think. Have you ever had something crazy like this happen? You know, viewers of this channel often ask me how they should sight in their rifle, how high they should be at 100 yards, or at what specific distance they should be dead on. Well, it's highly variable depending on where you hunt, how you hunt, how far you like to shoot, and what your bullet is capable of reaching. So instead of me giving you an absolute number, I think I want to teach you how to zero your rifle for your most effective range. And for me, that's always the maximum point blank range system. Hey, I want to thank our Patreons. As always, you guys really make it possible for us to stay at this. You know, there's a lot of fun things to do out here besides make videos, but as long as I've got your moral support, by golly, I'm going to hang in there. So I invite the rest of you to subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing here and consider joining our Patreon community. Just go to patreon.com, Ron Spomer Outdoors, and we'll open a door and let you in. <laughs> Appreciate it. Now, how to zero that rifle? As I mentioned earlier, it depends on how fast your bullet is going. You do not want to zero your 30-30 the same you zero your 300 win mag. I have here a 25 out 6 that I've been working with. We're going to demonstrate with this rifle, but that doesn't mean you have to zero the way I do on this rifle. We're going to teach the maximum point blank range system for zeroing your rifle because that gives you the maximum opportunity to make a quick shot and hit your target out to roughly 300 yards with most modern bottleneck cartridges. And some of them will even extend that to 350 yards, maybe even a little bit farther. So here's a quick basic description. Think of shooting down a pipe and you want to keep your bullet inside of that pipe when you shoot dead center. So let's use the pipe, the diameter of the vital zone of our target, a deer. So a deer's chest is roughly 16 to 18 inches top to bottom. The vitals inside of there are probably 12 inches or 10 inches. So we're going to use a six inch target, aim for the dead center and adjust our scope so that at any peak, the bullet is not going to exceed that top of that six inch target. Make sense? Now, if you're a precision shooter and you insist on hitting this every time, it's not going to work for you. We're talking deer hunting here. So this will apply to elk, deer, pronghorn, even coyotes. You might want to step down to four inch target on that, but just figure the vital zone of your target and use that to figure all the rest of this stuff out. Here's the idea then, we've got this maximum point blank range of a six inch target. And I did the numbers on the ballistics calculator for the bullet I'm shooting. This particular bullet is a 92 grain hammer, all copper hollow point bullet. And I am driving at 3,550 feet per second from this single shot rifle. That's really fast, so it shoots really flat. It tells me to zero it at 292 yards. Now you're gonna say, wait a minute, I, I don't have a range where I can zero anything at 292 yards. I got a hundred. Yeah, that's what most of us have. But this chart also tells you how high to set it at a hundred yards to get that 292 yard zero. So what happens is, of course, your barrel is tilted up a little bit in relation to your scope. So the scope sits a little bit candid like this. The barrels are like that. So when you shoot, your bullet goes through the line of sight at about 30 to 40 yards. And then it's flying a little bit higher, not because the bullet has extra energy. It's just because you've angled your gun that way. The whole time that bullet is falling. But since you've angled it up, it's going to get out there quite a ways before it falls. So that's what we're doing. We're going to sight in high at 100 yards. It's going to still be climbing, and it's going to be up there at 175 yards. And that's about where it's going to peak three inches high. Remember, six-inch target, dead center, three inches up. So first thing I'm going to do here is shoot it at 100. Now, I've been shooting, working up loads here, so I'm pretty close to on. I think I just need to dial down a little bit. So we're going to tweak it here so that I'm 2.14 inches high. That's what my chart told me at 100 yards. And let's see if we can get there. Somewhere in that two inch range should do the trick. Let's see how high we are. I think I'm a little higher than I need to be on this deal. Well, I'm slowing my heartbeat here. I'll tell you, I am going to aim for the junction at the bottom of the triangle rather than the center of this target. And then we'll measure up from there. Ho oh, ho, there we are. Looks like I am about an inch up. 
Oh, no, that's kind of crazy. Because the other night when I was shooting out to 300 yards, I was still above my point of aim. So I thought I must be setting really high on my elevation at 100. So either this thing is going a lot faster than my chronograph told me, or my bullet has a higher BC than it's telling me, or the cold barrel shoots to a different place than the warm barrel. And that's something else we need to watch for. So, much as I hate to waste my expensive bullets, I think I'm gonna try one more just to make sure we are really shooting as high as it says we are. I thought it would be higher than that. Here we go. I wanna be two inches up before I start dialing. Well, wait a minute. Now, if I'm talking about a cold barrel, maybe I ought to wait for that barrel to cool down, eh? This is a single shot rifle. It's kind of silly to uh, zero it with a hot barrel and then go hunting. And when you see your deer, you take one shot and it shoots higher or lower someplace different. So let's switch this off for a little bit. Let that barrel completely cool, then we'll shoot again. All right, that feels pretty much cool down to me. So we'll try another shot. I'm gonna have to load some more ammo. Right, I'm going here. Now that one's up uh, about another th half to three quarter of an inch. So it might be a real cold barrel issue and it might be a dirty barrel, but the windage is perfect as it always is with this rifle. They just are almost always dead on unless the wind is blowing. I mean, that is really sweet. But I'm a little bit concerned about the up and down going on here. So if we're going to compromise that first bullet's an inch up, the second one is probably inch and three quarters. So we're getting pretty close to that two inches up if we split the difference in the middle. I think if I give her two clicks up, that should put it up a half inch more. All right. It's not dead cold, but it's not exactly hot either. So I think we'll be good. Looks like it went into the second hole. Oh my. This rifle shoots, I tell you. So, I'm left scratching my head, guys, about that first shot. Whether I should come back in uh, 15 minutes to a really cold barrel. But, you know, I'm not going to miss my deer with that setting right there. All right, guys, as you can see, that is not a bad group. First shot, second shot, third shot. Now, those two suggest that I'm just right, because we're up from aiming point right here. We're up one, two, and just a smidgen more. And my trajectory chart calls for 2.14 inches up. I think I can trust this now, but I'm a little concerned about that first shot being a little bit low. I'll work on that later, but this is all part of working with your rifle and learning how it shoots. You can't get it all done necessarily in a few shots. You can get on target, you can determine what your accuracy is, but you've got cold barrel issues, dirty barrel issues. There's just a lot to work with over time. Guys, this was a target I shot last week. 200 yard shot and two 300 yard shots. As you can see, they're striking pretty high. I aimed right here, so I hit one, two, a little more than two inches high at 200, but the 300 yard shots were even higher. This is a little bit of wind deflection on this one. Let's slide over to that 200 yard target now. Yeah, it's straight up once again. But this is the process for zeroing your rifle. Now what you can see is that if I have a deer anywhere out to 200 yards, I'm going to hit it anywhere from two to three inches high. Now that might sound crazy, like, oh my gosh, you're three inches high? Well, wait a minute. You're talking about a 10 inch vital zone on a deer. So if you're aiming at his heart, you hit three inches high, you've still got him. It's in the vital zone. You just don't wanna go five inches high or six inches high, that's crazy. Some guys will zero really too high. So at 300 yards, this should be dead on to maybe an inch low. And at 340 yards, I'm supposed to be three inches under my line of sight. I'm good for 300 yards straight on hold. I don't have to calculate. I don't have to do any kind of man manipulating of the scope. Just get on my target and make my shot. Okay, 300 yard target is up there. Now I've got a big lens trained on it. 
at a 120 frames a second to get slow-mo, we might pick up a bullet trace going in. Let's just see how high we hit at 300. Now this is the same target with ha that has holes in it from that 200 yard shooting and last week's 300 yard shooting. So let's see where I'm going to aim here. Yeah, it's getting kind of hard to see. I'm going to have to go for the center orange triangle. Here we go. Well, let's go see what happened. I gotta ask for your help on this one, everybody. 300 yard shot, I was aiming here, so I hit up one, two, three, four inches high. Three and a half inches high at 300 yards. This is crazy. You know, I took a peek at the uh, bullet trace out of that other camera. And from the looks of that, I think I do have some powder in the bullet. That's sort of a self-propelled missile. That thing was laying down some smoke. It must be extreme moisture in the air. It had some rain the other day, and it's really damp. But that is crazy what that bullet does at 300 yards. So, oh, man. 200 yards, it was just where it's supposed to be, and 300 is higher. That's a mystery to me, guys. Maybe someday I'll figure it out. Let me know what you think. Have you ever had something crazy like this happen? Because that bullet's just like it's got afterburners in it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but boy, that sure gives me some range. That's the system, guys. Now, if you've got a slower bullet, like a 30-30, and it drops more, you're not going to be able to reach the maximum point blank range of 300 yards. You'll probably be lucky to get 250. You've just got to know the BC of your bullet the muzzle velocity that you're getting when you shoot it, and then run it through those ballistics calculators online. If those will give you the numbers, then go out to the range like this and double check. You know, this one's suggesting that it shoots actually higher than predicted, but this is a real world stuff happens. Some of it I can't even explain, but uh, you just need to know where your gun shoots. Now, if you don't have a chronograph to get your absolute muzzle velocity, use the information on the ammo box that's provided. We take it with a grain of salt. I've seen those be off by as much as 100 feet per second one way or another. Or look at your reloading manuals and assume that you're getting roughly what they predict you're going to get. But then just test it on the range. And if it's not doing exactly what it says, perhaps you're getting more velocity than you thought, perhaps less. But definitely try that maximum point blank range system because it's the hunter's best friend. Hey, Ron Spomer here, and uh, I thank you for watching. I invite you to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, hunt honest and shoot straight.